Let's start things off with a story out of Richmond when uh, Virginia Lieutenant Governor Winsome Sears gavel came up missing. She used one of her high heels to bring the Senate into session. I took my mallet. I don't have a mallet. They took it again. You got to love it. The laughter is killing me. Winsome put those pilgrim high heels to work. What are those? She said they took it again. A prank war clearly has been declared in the Senate and Winsome Sears is the target. You Winsome, you lose some. You, oh, I'm sorry. You win some, you lose some. I blew right past that joke. Timing is everything. Sears took it in stride, though, for what it's worth. If any of you have seen my gavel, please uh, return it. We'll find the offending senator. But as we have seen, the heel did just fine. <laughs> One shoe can change a life, Ask Cinderella. Hey, ask me. I had to wear Ewing's to junior high school, and they never let me live it down. You win some, you lose some. Don't let a missed joke mean you can't bring it back later. Cinderella would have never worn those shoes, but that was a very, very good comeback. She should keep an extra gavel on her from now on. This is just the latest example of alternative ways women have used shoes. In fact, you know what? Here's a quick history lesson. Throughout time, women have found creative uses for shoes that have nothing to do with walking. Bottle openers, for instance. There's always spankings, you know, back before parents knew about timeouts. Then there's fly swatters, projectile weapons, hammering nails. Seriously, people hammer nails with shoes. The undisputed champion multipurpose shoe, though, is, of course, the chancla. Or the chancleta, if you prefer flip-flops to slides. Now, chanclas have taken out more species than the asteroid that killed off the dinosaurs. They perform every function previously listed while being comfortable and they can be as relaxing as slippers or they can be a menace like black air force ones viva la chancla now i chose this next story out of mount vernon virginia because it explains so much about so much the most expensive home ever sold in the dc area now belongs to washington commander's owner dan snyder man this guy is mr burns from the simpsons in real life just just look at that place. Look at this. This is wild. The Riverview Estate, located near George Washington's Mount Vernon in Virginia, sits on 16 and a half acres and sold for $48 million. $48 million. Good Lord, that's a lot of money. Meanwhile, our home, FedEx Field, is falling apart at the seams. Now I see why Dan Snyder isn't worried about losing seasons, pressure from Congress, or the name change. Dan has a whole compound to explore. There's rooms in that house that he probably hasn't even found yet. You know, kind of like the formula to winning games. This is where your jersey sales and season ticket money is going. He's clearly not selling the team anytime soon. His place makes Jeff Bezos' place look like a studio apartment. He's not going anywhere for better or for worse. Really, it's, really it's just for worse. Now, I picked another story out of Richmond because of course, we need a palate cleanser after seeing how stanky rich Dan Snyder is. Residents of the Discovery Village Senior Living Facility are enjoying the Winter Olympics by staging their own version of the games inside the facility. While events might be low on ice and snow uh, there, they're high on the fun factor. Seniors had the opportunity to ice luge down the hallway and root for their favorite team as they competed for the gold. Somebody just having the best time. It's something different that we don't always do. And it's just a great way to get everybody together and have some fun doing something a little bit different. First of all, shout out to the guy just standing around with his arms folded in the green. He was clearly not amused. He was like, this used to be my private time. Now I got to be out here socializing with all these strangers. This is this is not what I signed up for. Wait till my daughter hears about this. That he's giving all the energy that I would be at that moment. That last guy, by the way, gliding down the hallway is all the rest of you. If I live long enough for my daughter to put me in a home, put me in this one because they are living their best lives. Send me to Discovery Village and not Shady Pines. I'd rather watch this 
than the actual Winter Olympics. There's way less doping scandals, and unless they, you know, unless they start testing for blue pills. Now we're headed to Phoenix for this next story because it's God's plan, God's plan. Reverend Andres Arango, a Catholic priest originally from Colombia, resigned after a church investigation found he'd been incorrectly performing baptisms for 20 years, which apparently renders them invalid for thousands of people. Now get this, during the rituals, Father Arango would say, quote, we baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, instead of I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Really, really, one word made all that difference. Y'all really think God is turning people away over semantics and clerical errors? English is this guy's second language. I highly doubt St. Peter's at the pearly gates like, hey, you learn to speak English or you burn in hell. Now, if proper grammar is the barometer, a whole lot of us are going to be in trouble. I see what y'all be writing. Of course, my favorite story, Winsome Sears and her shoe gavel, since it inspired a history lesson and brought back a Jay-Z diss track and childhood trauma all at once.